Welcome back everyone, my name is Trap. Today we're going to be going over some flexibility that you get using LazyVim, a modern plugin manager for NeoVim. And throughout my presentation today, you'll, you'll see me using the Bash shell. I'll also be using NeoVim, Tmox, Wiki.Vim. Special shout out to TJ, Javid, TJ for his uh, excellent videos on personal development environments. I got a lot from those. Also, I'll be using uh, Vim, Fugitive.Vim as my Git plugin. I also will be, see, you'll see me using Telescope quite a bit. We will be using Noise, that's the new one that we're going to add. This is a highly experimental plugin, but I've had a lot of success using it the last week or so. I've really enjoyed it. And we'll combine that with NVIM. Uh, we'll combine that with NVIM Notify to get some additional behavior. That is optional, but it's pretty cool when you bring the two together. You'll see me using two different file explorers. My default is NVIM Tree, but I'm also going to bring in NeoTree NVIM. So with that, now we will go directly into NeoVim and we're going to check my current configuration, what my startup time and the number of plugins that are loaded so we can see that I've got a 22.21 millisecond startup time and I've got 24 plugins loaded. So the next step that we're going to take is we're going to customize my environment and we're going to enable noise. So in my customization file, I have flags that I changed from true to false. And we will go and look at my, um, we'll look at my utilities file, which has all my plugins loaded. So recall that that um, Lazy allows you to set an enabled flag, and that flag can be true or false. I use a function to do this, so I can control this uh, a little more granular as I'm working through my through my experiments. So. With that change made, what we're going to do is save the file and we're going to go in and, and uh, launch NeoVim again and we're going to see some behavior differences at startup. So the first thing we notice is that two plugins are automatically loading. So, so Lazy is smart enough to load noise and its dependency. So now we have uh, two more plugins loaded. We'll get out of Vim and we'll check the startup time again. So my startup time is 19.93 seconds, still really good. So you're gonna notice anywhere from a one to 2% startup time difference based on what you're doing on your machine at the time you're, you're starting. So don't let that small variability freak you out too much. So with those plugins loaded, we'll get, go ahead and get out of NeoVim and just restart it. You've already noticed something, but I'm gonna explain that in just a second. So when we go right back into NeoVim, the very first thing you notice is the command line is no longer at the bottom of the screen. This is what Noise is doing. It's pretty cool. Um, I've, I've really been enjoying that. So it allows you to visually focus on the center of your screen instead of always you know, moving your eyes down to the bottom. The other thing that's cool is watch the prompt. So the prompt changes ever so slightly based on what you're doing. So if we type help as an example, um, and now we have a question mark for the prompt so I can do you know any type of help command that I wanted to. If I change that to a uh, command prompt and I did, um, I got to get out of help first, so let me get out of help and we go back and we set a dollar sign, I'm sorry, a command prompt, ls, ls minus, why is it not changing? Oh, it's a bang, sorry. So if we go in here and we do a bang, notice it changed the dollar sign. So that's pretty cool. So you've got some feedback on this telling you that you're at command mode. So at this point, you know, if I were to do, you know, an LS minus LA, it's going to list stuff in my buffer, which is nonsensical, but I did it anyway. So we can get out of this thing pretty quickly and go right back into, into uh, NeoVim. So that plugin is giving me some kind of cool feedback. That's what um, Noise is doing. Well, Noise gets a little cooler even when you make another change. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to enable VM, uh, NVIM Notify. So NVIM Notify brings in some more behavior. So what we're going to expect to see is we're going to expect to see that Lazy is smart enough to load the other plugin because I told to use it. Okay, so we've got another plugin in. That's great, it's loaded. Uh, we're going to get out of VIM again. Uh, we'll do a quit and get out all the way and we'll go back and check startup times again. So you see I'm still around that 19 to 18 millisecond startup time and I'm still only loading 27 plugins. 
So the plugins themselves haven't really changed because they're not being used yet. So now let's see what happens um, when we actually start to do a little bit more. So we're gonna see when I start to edit certain kinds of files, we're gonna notice in the upper right hand corner of my screen, I'm gonna start getting feedback. So we'll just go back into DOVM again and we'll find a file and we'll, we'll look at the keybinds file. So notice in the upper right hand corner, I got a message up there that is being displayed for about, it's being displayed for a thousand milliseconds. If I, if I type something in error, like I type a stupid command, I get a nice little error message up there in the top of the screen. So I thought that was really cool as well. So I'm just beginning to experiment with these two plugins and change my workflow based on what they do. And so far I've been very impressed with what they do. Um, and I've, I've enjoyed interacting with them. I think what I'm probably going to do is change that display from the top of the screen, maybe down to the lower right hand corner. Um, and you'll see why in just a second. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to, we'll get out of Vim again, and we are going to go back to uh, our editor and we are going to enable at this point, NeoTree. So I already have in Vim tree loaded. So I'm going to change this one to true, true, and then we'll go down to Neo Inventory and we'll change this one to false. So I'm literally at this point, I'm swapping file explorers. That's all I'm doing. And so my goal is to maintain my workflow regardless of the file explorer that I'm using. So the first thing we notice is Neo Trini is now loading that plugin for me. And if I go to the um, packages profiles you notice that the startup time is still there and if I go to the H directory I'm sorry not the H directory but the lazy uh, let me do that again so you see it so it's the H command so for me it's later PH um, if I do it right there it goes and it's giving me some errors I can't do that okay it's still, it thinks I'm trying to edit the file okay that's cool um, but you can see if I do the H command here, if I type the capital H, it's telling me that I can do a clean. So if I go ahead and do the clean, it's gone. And next time I start you know, that, that'll that be gone. So if I get, away, get out of this and I get out of it one more time and I go right back into M and I go to the PH again, you'll see that the files are loaded. That no longer is telling me I need to clean anything because it's gone, okay, which is kind of cool. So now at this point, um, what I'm going to do is I want to I want to go back into my keybind keybindings file, which okay it's fine I can use any file that we want to use, um, and these things work just the way I expect them to. So I'm bouncing around doing my folding stuff, and then suddenly I decide I need to find that file. Where is it? Right. So I do it nf, and so notice what just happened. I type a muscle memory command that I used to use from my nurture days, which was nurture find file. Notice what this nice plugin is doing. Lazy and, ne and Notify told me in the upper right hand corner that a plugin had been loaded. It also highlight where that file is located. So you see Lua Trap Core, the name of the file is actually highlighted in the tree for me. Now recall, this is just any ordinary Vim buffer, so I can do set number, which means I can, I can navigate by line numbers if I wanted to. So if the tree was really deep, and I wanted to do something like navigate to line five, I just do a 5G and I pop to line five. If I wanted to be on line 19, I just do the G and I pop to line 19. Now you would expect that this will open the file when you press the enter key, and sure enough, it does. So from my workflow standpoint, it's exactly the same. I just am using a different file explorer to see if I like it. That's all I'm doing. So let's take a quick look at the utilities file and see how I configured that file. So if we zip everything up and we simply look for Neo, in any old tree, we're gonna find that the first hit is this is one of those buffers that I can close using the Q key. So it's been set up that I can type the Q and that buffer will close. If I look further in my file, what I'm gonna find is that file, that, I'm sorry, that plugin is configured with minimal configuration. So if you look at Lazy Vim itself, or you look at the Lazy Vim starter kit, you're going to find a lot of really good code as examples. What I've chosen to do is minimize the amount of code I'm injecting into my workflow so I can experiment with it first to determine if I like it.
okay? So you can see in this particular thing, the major change that I made is I said, I want the position of the, of the tree on the right of my screen. So when I bring that up, notice my code isn't moving and that's what I want. I don't want my code changing. I want my code to stay as best I can where it is. And that even holds true when I do a split. So if I do a split, the split's not moving. I prefer to have it overwritten, but I can look at my code. Generally speaking, I'm using a much higher resolution, a much smaller font size, so that tree, when it comes up, it doesn't, uh, doesn't touch my code. So if you notice on my right-hand side of the screen, I enforce 80 columns almost in every file that I edit, which gives me the ability to see, to see 160 columns because of the size of my monitor and the way I have my font set up. So that's a little trick that I've used to be a little more productive so my code's not moving so I can study code without having to move around. So now what we're gonna do is we will just simply get out of NeoVim and we'll go back to the other session. And what we're going to do in this session is we'll go right back into the customization flags. And this time we're gonna make a mistake and it's an intentional mistake. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna enable both plugin, both File Explorer plugins. So this is nonsensical, but we're going to do it anyway. So at this point, when we go back into NeoVim, we're seeing that that plugin was loaded, which is what we expected, okay? And when it's done cloning, we'll get out, we'll go right back in, we'll check the startup time. So I'm still at that 18.52 milliseconds, and I'm still at 27 plugins, so everything is looking good so far. Now what we're going to do is go right back into the key bindings file. And we're gonna take a look at those plugins again. So you notice on the lower right-hand corner of my screen, I've got some feedback taking place. Also on the upper right-hand corner of the screen, I had feedback taking place. So what we're gonna do is in this file, we're gonna look for tree, just to find out where tree is. And what we're gonna see here is that I used the, both customization flags in this file. So what I'm saying is if NeoTree or InvimTree is enabled, then I wanna drop into the comment block below. Notice uh, we will turn off relative line numbers so I can speak to line numbers. Uh, let's make that edit correct. And Y O R. Okay, so notice on line 248, 249 is the, is the major conditional to allow me to drop into this block. No surprise there. On line 253 and 257, notice that it's the same key binding. So in this section, it's the same key bindings for the same three commands I essentially want to uh, invoke. But I use the same keybind, so from a muscle memory standpoint, it's always control N. So notice when I just did control N, the way I've got my keybindings files set up, it enabled the right file to load. So the last part of this demo is we're gonna show you what happens when we now interact with Git and Fugitive. I get a slightly different behavior, which was a pleasant surprise. So we'll hop back over this and we're going to see, I've got this set to true, this is true, this is great, that's what I want, this is true, um, and this is true. So I don't really care that I've got the conflict because my key, my key binding file will resolve that for me at runtime. Um, so one other important to note to make before I show you the git commit command is when you look at your customization, however you do this, I have got this configured as if I were going to use it. So I configure it exactly the way I want it to configure it, and then I enable or disable that by using this enable flag. That allows me to bring a bunch of different things in and experiment with them, and I don't have to comment out code because I don't want to come back into my code, and I don't want to find something like this. I, I, I don't want to see commented code out if I can avoid it. So using the power of lazy bin and this enabled flag allows me to configure something correctly, but also make sure it's not being used at the same time. So I have active code. If I want to see it, I enable it. So with that said, let's see what Git Fugitive thinks about the code changes I've made. So I don't care about the lazy lock file for this demo, so I'm just going to delete it. I do care about this, but I want to know what I did. So I do a DV on it. I see the changes that I made. That's exactly what I expect. But notice that in the upper right hand corner, I'm gonna do that again. Notice in the upper right hand hand corner, when I do a DV, which is a fugitive command saying do a diff, okay, I'm getting a message in the upper right hand corner. So I'm getting fugitive feedback now that I, that I wasn't getting before, which I thought that was really cool. 
So the final step that I do is I stage the commit, I make a commit message, and I'm just gonna say finalize, you know, something like finalize, uh, I-E-Z-E demo. And that was good enough for me. Notice that that command prompt for WQ is now in the center of my screen, normally it'd be at the bottom, so it helps my workflow out. Again, I quit the file, I'm ready to do a push. Now I can push right from my, from my environment if I wanted to. So I could do a uh, GP, uh, GP, sometimes it takes two, I'm not sure why it's taking multiple keystrokes to do that. But you see, boom, it just went in. Okay, to recap everybody, we demonstrated using Lazy and Noise and Notify to get a very rich environment from the user's perspective. We learned from some of the things that TJ did with personalizing your environment. Find ways to personalize your environment to make your environment better for yourself. I then went on to use two different explorers, uh, NVIM Notify, I'm sorry, NVIM Tree and NeoTree to demonstrate I can easily swap a plugin and use them at runtime without commenting out my code. My code is ready to go, it's ready to run. The only thing I have to use is use that very powerful feature of Lazy, which allows you to enable a plugin or disable the plugin by setting a flag. Hey, this is Trap. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it. I hope it gave you some ideas. Give me some likes, give me some comments to help me improve this content and make it better. Thank you again for watching. I'm Trap, I'm out. May God bless you.